I'm Patchy, this is Max, and this episode we're going to cover how to soft mod your PS2. Right, so what you're going to need for the soft mod is a PS1 game, PS2 memory card with at least one and a half megs of space on it, a USB thumb drive that is compatible with your uh, PS2, obviously a PS2, uh, one that's not the slim version, and you're also going to need a copy of Codebreaker or Action Replay Max to uh, to do the soft mod. So let's get into it. How the soft mod works is when PS2 loads a PS1 game, the console looks for a file called the title.db located on the memory card for special uh, instructions to be applied to the specific PS1 game. So it works correctly. And, uh, Basically, the exploit relies on creating an incorrect entry in this file, which will trigger a buffer overflow, which will allow you to run unencrypted code from the memory card. To be able to trigger this exploit, you're going to need some way of installing the modified title.db onto your memory card. And to do this, we're going to use Codebreaker. You can also use Action Replay Max. This soft model will allow you to run third party programs in the ELF executable format. We're going to show you some, some programs here. Uh, we're going to show you CogSwap, which will allow you to switch out a legitimate game for a burn game. And also uh, the hard drive loader, which will allow you to run games off your hard drive if you have one. You can also install emulators and uh, media players and things like that. To be able to do this PS2 soft mount, we're going to need a couple programs. We're going to need ID get to be able to get the ID of your PS1 game. We're going to need titleman frontend to be able to create that title.db and we're going to need ps2 save builder to be able to create the save game that runs the buffer overflow. Alright, so first thing we need to do is put in our ps1 game to our CD drive and run id get. And like I said before, this will get the, the title id of this ps1 game. Just put your CD in, select your drive and push get. Alright, next we need to open titleman frontend to be able to create the title.db. Just open it up here, um, push OK, and select create title.db. And this will just create it in the same folder that the program's in. And then we need to select our uh, prefix from the drop down menu, and then add that, uh, those five digits there that are the ID of your PS1 game and then we'll add that to the title.database. And then lastly, just make sure it's all there. Just click on the list current contents and as you can see, the ID does show up in the, the title.db. Okay. And then you can see it's saved in the same folder. Next we need to open up the PS2 save builder. We already have a save game that will run the exploit. All you need to do is load it into PS2 save builder and add the title.db and some extra programs that you want to have on the PS2. So just go to open and uh, go to the folder where you have that save game stored at. Alright, once you have it loaded, you'll see a whole bunch of files pop up. And you also want to make sure that your root slash ID is correct. Um, basically, if you have an NTSC PS2, like if you're in the United States or Japan, you want the root to be BA data dash system. But if you have a PAL PS2, if you live anywhere else besides the United States and Japan, you want to have the root equal to BE data slash system. Next we want to add our title.db. And then we want to add some extra programs that we want to be able to use on the PS2. Alright, the first program we're going to add is COG swap loader. This will basically allow us to switch out a normal PS2 game for a burn game. And then we want to add the hard drive loader. This will allow us to load games off your hard drive if you have one. And also we want to add the server that will run on the PS2 to allow you to upload games to your PS2. Um, and we're going to use the, the, the server version 0.8. .5. Seems to work better than the older version. Alright, now you can see all the, the files listed there. And uh, all we need to do is go to File, Save As, and just save to your desktop or whatever. 
After you save it, you want to check it to make sure it's small enough to fit on your PS2's memory card. And then you're just going to insert your USB drive and copy it over. insert Code Breaker or Action Replay Max, um, which will allow us to copy the save game from our USB drive to our memory card. And we're going to be using Code Breaker to do this. Let's have our PS2 load up here. Once it's loaded up, you just want to select Device Manager. And just scroll over to your USB drive. And then you want to select Your System Configuration, which is your save game that will run the exploit. Just push X to select it, triangle to copy it. And then just select your memory card. Then it's going to ask if you want to override it, just push yes. I would recommend backing up all your save games that you have on this memory card just in case some get messed up. Alright, now that we have that modified save game copied over to our memory card, we can go ahead and boot up the PS1 game. Um, for this one, we use Grand Theft Auto. And what it's going to do when this boots up, it's going to check for that save game on the memory card, and it's going to load it, and it's going to run the exploit. Alright, for the soft mod, we use Launcher. ELF. There's uh, multiple programs out there like PS2 menu. Um, this is just the one we use because it's very quick. All right. First, you need you're going to need to configure it. Just push the left when it first boots up. And you're just going to configure some hotkeys. So when you push like circle, it'll run a certain program. All right. And the first one, the MC0, is your memory card in the first slot. Let's go to the folder in there. And here's the three programs we put on our memory card. And the first one we're just going to select is the COG swap loader, the CSL. And after we do that, we're just going to go down to the next button, which is X, and we're going to select the hard drive loader server. And then we're going to go down to square, and we're going to select the hard drive loader program. This just makes it easier to run programs uh, so you don't have to go find the programs on your memory card every single time. And one more program we're going to put on there which comes with uh, the exploit is the file browser. This will allow you to browse through all the files on your memory card and your hard drive. Just scroll down to miscellaneous and select the first one, file browser. Alright, now we just want to scroll down to OK, and this will save our configuration. Alright, now we're ready to select a program. And the first program we're going to show you is the COG swap loader, which is used to be able to play burn CDs. Alright, we're just going to hop back on the computer here, and we'll just show you what you need to do to make backups of your games and how to burn them. We're just going to use alcohol 120. 
to make an image of the PS2 game, just go to Image Making Wizard, select the CD drive that your game's in, and then select the data type PS2. And then all you have to do is click Next and just follow instructions. To burn an image, go to Image Burning Wizard, locate your image on your hard drive, and just push Next. And then select the data type PS2. And you also want to put a slow write speed so it doesn't get any errors. And that's basically how you burn CDs. Alright, we're going to switch back to our PS2 here, and we're going to show you how to use CogSwap. Um, the hotkey we have set for right now is circle, so just push circle and it'll boot up. All right. Now you want to take out your PS1 game and put in a legitimate PS2 game. And you want to put in a PS2 game that has a a large table of contents. Um, so like a, a newer game that has a lot of files on it. This way it won't have any problems loading other games. Alright. And then CogSwap will recognize it's a PS2 game. All you have to do is push X. Now we need to use some sort of tool to open up the CD tray. Uh, we made a video earlier and I'm just going to switch over to right now and explain the reason for this. Alright, I have my PS2 taken apart here, and I'm going to show you the purpose of the card slide. Normally, if you try to open the CD tray, it'll just get stuck, and if you force it, it's going to break. So you need some type of tool, like the card slide, to unlock that locking mechanism. Um, however, it is, the card slide is uh, completely unnecessary. You can use um, a whole bunch of tools. You can even make your own. And I'll show you what it does. I'm just going to take off the top of the CD tray here, and you can see here's the tray here and the laser. Um, I'm going to take out the tray, and you'll be able to see the locking mechanism. They're just two screws holding it in. Um, just unscrew them. And you can lift up the left side of the tray and then the other side has to slide out. Alright. And the locking mechanism is right here. And I'm going to zoom in here. Alright. And you can see, I lift it up, it's a little notch that comes out. And what you need to do is use some type of tool to hook onto that. I have my short hook lock pick right here. You can use this, or you can use the card slider. Um, maybe an old library card that you cut out and uh, give it a hook or whatever. And you just need to catch it, the little notch that's hanging out there, and push it over to the right. And as you can see, the laser and the the motor that spins the CD drops down. This will allow the CD tray to slide out and to put in a different CD and then you can slide it back in. Um, but once you slide the tray back in, you have to lift back up um, the laser and you know all the stuff down there. So you have to reinsert your uh, tool and catch the notch again and slide it all the way back. And that's how you uh, switch out a CD. And I'll show you that in action here. Just put this back on.
screws back in. I'm going to replace the top. Um, this, this is necessary because it holds the CD in. Alright, that's all on. Um, it's going to turn it on. And pop open the CD drive. Good, I didn't break it. Good sign. Put in the trigger CD. And I'm going to just boot up into the. I'm just going to load the exploit like usual. And I'm going to launch the cog slot. And I'm going to. Eject the trigger CD and insert the legitimate CD. Alright, and now this is where I need to switch out the legitimate CD for the burn CD. And obviously, you can't just do that with the eject button, you have to do it manually. Um, so, all you have to do is insert your tool, whatever it may be. First, you have to go to the right side. Push it over to the right. And as you can see, it dropped down and it slid out a little bit. And I can pull it out the rest of the way. Put in the burn CD. Push it back in. And then to, this is the tricky part, kind of finding it. Uh, it may help if you lift up the CD tray a little bit to get all the way over to the right. And You'll feel it when you get it. And just push it over again. And as you can see, it popped back up. Alright, now all I have to do is tell Cog Swap that I have switched the CDs. And everything should boot up properly. We'll switch over the TV. And there you go. I've switched the CDs. It is now Shadows of the Colossus. Alright, I'm just going to show you that once again with the PS2 all put back together. If you're using like a lock pit or some other type of tool besides the card slide, you're probably going to want to pop off this little piece of plastic that goes in front of the CD tray. Pretty easy, just kind of tug on it. Just gonna use the same method as before. Swap in our burn CD. Alright. And then just press X. Alright, there you go, that's how you use cog swap. Alright, the next thing we're going to show you is how to play games off your hard drive. So we need to restart our PS2 here. And once it boots back up, you want to select the D, the HD, LD, underscore, SDR, which is the hard drive loader server. And basically this will open up a port on the PS2 and allow you to transfer games from your computer to your PS2. Alright, and once it's up and running, it'll tell you what IP address it has, and by default it's going to use 192.168.1.23.
and to transfer over the files to the PS2, we're going to use HDL underscore dump. We're just going to open up the folder and go to the GUI. And the first thing we need to do is uh, modify the, the settings. And you want to change the default IP address to, to the 192.168.1.23. And you also want to uncheck limit to 28 bit. And then just save the settings. Alright. There's a couple things you can do. You can put in a CD into your, your computer and copy the contents of that CD to your hard drive. You can copy it, an ISO image from your hard drive to your PS2. It also allows you to create an ISO image from a CD that you have in your computer. Another program you can use to do that is DVD Decryptor. Um, you don't want to use LCAL 120 if you're going to be transferring to your hard drive because it doesn't create ISO files. It creates different CD images. All right, we're going to select the option to send an ISO to the PS2. Then you're just going to locate the image on your hard drive. And we're going to be transferring ICO. You just want to give it a name, uh, just the title of the game, whatever. And then you just want to start it. And uh, it may take a couple minutes depending on the size. Alright, so we have the PS2 here running with the uh, hard drive server loader behind us. And one thing to notice is that the IP address is always going to be the same for the PS2 no matter what network you're on. It does not use DHCP to grab an IP address. So it's always going to be set to the 192.168.1.23. So either you have to have a computer that's on the same subnet or you have to set up your computer uh, to be on the same subnet so you can make a connection to your PS2. So right now we have it set up via a crossover cable. But you also, if you're on a switch, you can do it this way too. So we're going to show you how to manually set your IP address to make sure that you're on the same subnet so you can transfer those files over to uh, your PS2. Alright, so what we're going to do, um, as you can see, we already have it currently set up on the proper subnet uh, with uh, a 192.168.1. address. For us, we have .4. Um, now, how we set that was we went to um, our network connections. And we went to our local area network, went to go down to properties, go down to TCP IP, internet protocol, select properties, and here it allows you to manually set your IP address and your subnet mask. As you can see, we set ours to 1.4. As long as you have a 192.168.1. something address, you'll be able to communicate with your PS2. Alright, looks like our file is all done transferring. One thing to note is to make sure that the game that you did copy over is compatible with the hard drive loader. You can do a quick uh, Google search for, compatibil for a compatibility list and just make sure that it's on that list. And if it's on there, you should be good to go. We're just going to switch back to our PS2. And, uh, we just need to restart it. All right, once the launcher is loaded up, um, you just push square to load the hard drive loader. And all you need to do is select your game. We only have one there, so. We just push X to play it. And if everything went right, it should load. Alright, there you go. That's how you play games off your hard drive. showed you a few programs to be able to play backup games on your software on a PS2. There's many different programs you can upload to your PS2. There's 
emulators, media players, and stuff like that. Well, that's it for this episode of Full Disclosure from AffinityExists.com. I'm Knox, this is Patch. See you guys next time.